Well, hello everyone and thanks for watching THV 11 News at Noon. I'm Amanda Yeager. Let's start the half hour with a first look at our weather forecast. We have meteorologist Scott Cover joining us. You had a busy weather night. Oh my goodness. Storms were pretty bad overnight. They sure were. We have dozens of reports of damage, whether that's thunderstorm wind damage, tornado damage in western Arkansas, and even several reports of large hail. This is a look over the last 18 hours. You can see those icons just littered over the map there. Those are all indicative of the destruction, the damage that those thunderstorms caused in its path. Now, right now, most of us are clear and quiet with the exception of a few folks in South Arkansas. That's where we continue to have thunderstorm activity this afternoon. You can see live radar right now showing a lot of lightning and thunder there. The lightning strike certainly can uh, keep your eyes from seeing the actual radar, and you can see there's a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Ashley County. In addition to that, a tornado watch in effect for parts of South Arkansas until 6 o'clock this evening. 77 is your high temperature. Can't rule out a few more stray showers and in central Arkansas. I think we're going to be dry though. Let's we'll look at your forecast coming up. If you or someone you know is looking for a job in central Arkansas, then listen up. The Big On Little Rock Job Fair is going on all day today at the State House Convention Center. Today's event is part of National Travel and Tourism Week in Arkansas. Until 6 this evening, members from all across the state's hospitality industry, along with other job seekers, will be in attendance and looking to hire. There is free parking in the Convention District parking garage. For more info, just head over to THV11.com. And that's not the only place looking to hire today. Nationwide Lowe's will host their national hiring day today. The home improvement store says it has more than 50,000 open positions nationwide as life starts to get closer to normal. If you're interested, you can apply in person at any Lowe's store until 7 p.m. tonight. Some applicants will receive on the spot offers. And Arkansas restaurants that suffered losses during the pandemic can now apply for a restaurant revitalization fund grant. The nearly $30 billion federal program provides restaurants, bars, caterers and other businesses with grants to help with pandemic related expenses. Every eligible business can apply now, but businesses owned by women, veterans and socially and economically disadvantaged individuals will have priority during the first three weeks of this program. You can apply on SBA.gov. Americans emerging from a year spent at home are in for a surprise at the store, rising prices on just about everything from our gas to groceries. Here's CBS's Carter Evans. It's sticker shock at the supermarket. This is unusually expensive. Rising prices at Tammy Gunther's local grocery store are adding $40 or more to her weekly bill. How much did you spend? 131 something. 131 bucks. You got five bags. It does feel like it feels like last year this would have been about 90 bucks for this. She's not alone. Americans are paying more for the basics. Citrus fruit up 9.8 percent, bacon up more than 8 percent, and beef up 7.1 percent. Gas station prices are up more than 22 percent from a year ago. They're as high as they were right before the pandemic. UCLA senior economist Leo Feller says gas prices fell so low last year it put some oil producers out of business and production still hasn't caught up as drivers hit the road again. Demand for groceries is up 11 percent because people hunkered down at home and that put pressure on suppliers which drove up food prices. This will start changing as people shop less at grocery stores and as they go out more to restaurants. You seem pretty confident that this is not the beginning of an inflationary period. Yeah, I don't think so. This is very different than 1970s. The consumers have a lot more power these days. But you can still expect basics like toilet paper and diapers to cost more. Procter & Gamble, Kimberly Clark and Coca-Cola announced they too are increasing prices because they're paying more for raw materials in short supply. It's bad for your pocketbook, but it's good in terms of we're back to how we were before. Consumer prices are expected to stabilize in the coming months. One exception, though, may be lumber. Lumber prices have skyrocketed 300% in the last year as people forced to isolate try to improve their homes. And there's no sign construction is slowing down. Carter Evans, CBS News, Los Angeles. 
All right, thank you, Carter. Well, we already know about a potential chlorine shortage for those looking to get the pool ready for the summer, but now there are concerns of an equipment shortage. It just keeps getting worse. Diamond Rock Pools in Little Rock telling us they've nearly doubled the number of pools they've built this year already. Well, that's kind of good news. Between more people looking to build pools and February snowstorm damaging over a million pools in Texas, manufacturers nationwide just can't keep up. And the, the manufacturers are just having to allocate some to them and some to everybody else. It hasn't affected us yet. It's coming. And if you do get your pool built, chlorine supplies are sitting at about 50% of their normal amount thanks to a major chlorine plant burning down in Louisiana earlier this year. Now we want to take a look at where we stand on the vaccine front in Arkansas. It's been almost five months since the state started administering the COVID-19 vaccine. We've received just more than two and a half million doses of the vaccine, and we've given over 1.7 million. That's about 69% of our total supply now. Governor Hutchinson says our vaccinations are higher than last week, and he wants everyone to continue doing their part. For the first time since vaccines became available in the state, the state is not ordering any more doses this week. This comes just one week after the state significantly cut back on its vaccine orders from the federal government. As of last week, Arkansas had more than 380,000 Pfizer doses, 290,000 Moderna doses, and 74,000 Johnson & Johnson doses. The state epidemiologist says because of that stockpile, there was no reason to get more. We felt that you know, as good stewards, we just didn't need to take more vaccine on until we had used what we had. Dr. Dillahay says the state will decide on a weekly basis whether or not to order more doses. Millions of young Americans could soon be eligible for the coronavirus vaccine. Skylar Henry has more details from the White House. A federal health official tells CBS News the FDA plans to authorize the Pfizer vaccine for children aged 12 to 15 as early as next week. I have two kids in that age range and they're both very excited to get it and I'm happy for them to get it because I really do think these vaccines are both remarkably effective and quite safe. Pfizer says clinical trials showed the vaccine was 100% effective in children that age and is well tolerated. The antibody response is actually higher than the antibody response we've observed in adults, young adults. And also there were no positive cases in the study group with the data that I've been able to obtain. Pfizer and Moderna are now running clinical trials for kids six months old and older. This comes as the number of adults getting vaccinated continues to drop to an average of about 2.3 million doses per day. That's down from a high of more than 3 million doses per day just last month. To reach herd immunity, we need a certain number of the general population, including this age group, to be vaccinated. But the number of new coronavirus cases is dropping as well prompting more states to lift all COVID restrictions. I think folks that are saying that they need to be policing people at this point, if you're saying that, you really are saying you don't believe in the vaccines. But health officials are still urging caution, as the variants of the virus are now spreading among unvaccinated young adults. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. Pfizer has been distributing its vaccine under an emergency use authorization from the FDA, but the drug manufacturer says it now has the six months of data showing the vaccine is safe, which is needed for full approval. Building a virtual congregation during the pandemic, how one pastor is up in his online game. And while many of us are drying out and cleaning up after the overnight thunderstorms, active weather continues in South Arkansas. We'll take a look at radar as well as what the rest of the day holds coming up in your full forecast.